Room Tone Podcast is a show produced by us, three movie nerds shooting the shit while talking about shooting the shit. Each episode builds upon the last, so we recommend starting at the beginning. Now, let's make a movie. Okay, I have a question. If you guys were hosting an orgy, who would you have cater said orgy? (laughs) What? (laughs) I would say Arby's. Arby's. Because roast beef sandwiches look like vaginas, and I think that's silly. (laughs) So my question is, do you think the grease is going to, like, take any effect during the orgy? It's not that greasy. It's not that greasy. I agree with you. I agree with you. Just greasy enough. I think people are hard on Arby's Mm. for the wrong reasons. Well, and if you want anything at an orgy, it's for people to be hard. Right. Wow, Swain. That that was... Thanks. Thanks, Dad. (laughs) And I think that mozzarella sticks would always be good. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's very so. valid. I, I feel like, one, I agree with that. Mozzarella sticks would be the king of yeah. orgy. Because yeah. you can make it sexy, or you can just have fun with it. Or you can just you eat cheese. You put the mozzarella sticks up your butthole. Oh. Also. And then, and then the person has to, out. like, grab it with their mouth and let it pull. Like steve It's kind of like a butt plug, but with cheese but cheesy mm. i just cheese would plug. i just would plug. love to see the flyers for like come to maddie's sex and cheese party <laughs> <laughs> for some reason cheese is in bigger letters than sex yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's well, like it's sex and the cheese so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so arby's that's interesting i like that yeah i'd say arby's would you have like the full spread or would you have like one particular sandwich i would probably just go with like roast beef sandwiches fries and mozzarella sticks crinkled or curly because they offer curly both. yeah because get crinkle fries the fuck away from me yeah because i think crinkle fries are not that bad i you think you are... were so wrong about crinkle that. fries are easily I, the worst shape of fry i would much prefer crinkled over curly that's why so though so I've always, ridiculous every time i get a curly fries they come out more cooked than i want them to be and they're always just like super crunchy and i yeah. don't i don't necessarily dig that crispy I, I like i like me the soft boys i would say the majority of curly fries stay soft in the middle because they're curled so the outside gets crunchy and the inside is gooey. i've always gotten them like crispy for some reason and that's my big beef about them i don't think they're that good they are definitely one of the crispier varieties of, of fry and i think with crinkle you know you you're, you're safe see i always feel like crinkle fries are undercooked because there's like so much potato there. Yeah, they're starchy. So you think curly fries would be the fries of the orgy then? Well, especially because they can be looped around a ween. Mm. And this is my orgy and I want curly fries. Yeah, by all means. You have you have all the f- whatever you want at your orgy. Yeah. I would do that. Would it no. be themed? Who are we inviting to this? I don't know. This is your orgy. <laughs> oh, okay. This is your orgy. You just, okay. you just post it on Craigslist. <laughs> oh. And just see what happens. Got it. Okay. I was thinking of like dream orgies. Okay. Well, who's who, who are two people? That's a different conversation. We'll move on. <laughs> Swain, what are you catering at your orgy? What's happening? What are people uh, eating? I think I've got the perfect caterer. If for you my- say anything with ice cream, I'm going to flip. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chili. That would suck. Oh, yeah. Chili would suck. Oh, I meant ice cream, but yes, chili would suck too. Oh God, chili! <laughs> Fuck off! Everyone's gassing. Mm, Everyone chili has... in like a pool would be nice, though. Like huh. a pool or like with noodle beans soup. And meat. Yeah, and human body parts. <laughs> mm, erotic. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, don't worry, gals. There's chlorine in here. Do what you want oh, in there. <laughs> yeah, you're chlorine not gonna, and beef. You're gonna be just fine. I would be wary because there's hot peppers. So any of your open orifices are. <laughs> gonna have a bad time don't go near the suction hole even if you think it's gonna feel good on your butt (laughs) yeah (laughs) which it does even if you think it's gonna feel good on your butt i think we should name this episode chlorine and beef oh my god (laughs) okay what are you having well that isn't well i was gonna say ice cream (laughs) but i was immediately immediately shot down why ice cream yeah why ice cream because it's fun it's light it, it's not light. It's not light. When you're moving around like that, it's kind of like fr- like frozen custard. You don't have to eat a whole shit ton of it, but you know, you just come in for a lick. So. No, I'm gonna <laughs> though. I'm gonna eat a lot. Yeah, because it's ice cream. You're an orgy. You well, just, that's up to you, man. You just came, dude. Like you're 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 ravenous. 
Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I know. (laughs) I think ice cream, and you can get either. I have fresh fruit. Of, you know, you ice cream. Like <laughs> <laughs> I love the no, pause. Ra- radio <laughs> silence for fresh fruit. Would you have like, um, like a Sunday bar? Yeah, I'd have. I'd probably have like Froyo. Isn't that a lot of work? Okay, not ice cream. I'm sorry. No, okay, so, I think so I, I, it. Yeah, I, yeah. I get it. Yeah. I just don't think that it's quite. I, I don't think I, I would go. I, I wouldn't <laughs> attend to your orgy. <laughs> You're not invited. <laughs> Oh, all right. End of the podcast. Let's turn it off. <laughs> no, I can't come to your orgy. Wait, what's an orgy? Is it just someone sitting in a room alone eating ice cream? I wish. That sounds Wait, nice. how many orgies have you had? <laughs> a lot. What is, a de- what is the description of an orgy? I feel like there has to be, like, it has to be, like, multiple people fucking. Merriam-Webster's wild- Dictionary. Shut up. A wild party, especially one involving excessive drinking and unrestrained sexual activity. I love that drinking is a necessity. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I vibe with that. I don't that. know if drinking would be cool. I feel like that would lead down to like a gray area of consent, and I wouldn't be for that. Everyone has to be, I shouldn't say everyone has to be sober, but like drinking probably isn't. And drinking is just gross. Yeah. <laughs> if you drink, you're gross. Yeah, this is not, <laughs> this is not the room for alcohol consumption. But you would have ice cream. Yeah, and I, okay, I understand that like it might be heavy. Yeah. It might, you know, kind of slug you down. Yeah. But I just think it's fun. <laughs> I think it's a I think it's a playful food. I just imagine you explaining this to the people who are fucking yeah. <laughs> and you're just naked eating froyo <laughs> next to them. Just standing up. I straight, thought it's playful food. <laughs> eating a handful of ice cream. Just, I think this is nice. <laughs> Have you, have you guys tried the Sunday bar? I think this is nice. <laughs> hey, hey, you guys. That's hey, what you're like. There's there's fresh fruit. <laughs> you know what? No, he doesn't get to come to my orgy either. I will say, though, the fresh fruit, I will say, w- does sound a little bit enjoyable. Like, that I sounds th- sticky. I, it does sound sticky. But I would uh, maybe like a sanitizer area just so you can wipe your hands yeah we'll have like a shower yeah someone told me once wings and i thought that was the the grossest i hate that Uh, not even boneless (laughs) like you gotta be you got there's fucking chicken bones everywhere (laughs) and hot sauce yeah Yeah, right no i'm not about anything sticky yeah austin who would you have cater yours ah god i see I think when you are at an orgy, you don't want to be the first one done. You know? <laughs> I love that none of us are speaking from personal no, experience. No, no, God, no. <laughs> yeah, three virgins talk about orgies. Yeah, pretty much. But, like, you know, you don't want to be the first one done. You want to continue having a good time. You don't want to feel sick afterwards. And so I think just some nice, like, Subway subs or some Jimmy John subs, like little bite sized ones. Where if you are more hungry, you can fill up, you can take off your toppings, put on toppings. It doesn't have to be super heavy, but it can be. What would, if you could only have one sandwich there, what would it be? Oh, wow, gosh, that's hard. Meatball sub. I th- no. <laughs> <laughs> I would say an Italian sub. That's fair. That's, I feel like that's a pretty. That's an even playing field. Yeah. What's, what's, what's on an Italian sub for the layman? A salami, pastrami, I think ham. Uh, tomato, shredded lettuce, onion, and some sort of vinaigrette. Like the Italian balsamic yeah. mm-hmm. mix or Can become. Could become. Could become. Please don't come on my sandwich. That would be fucking disgusting. Well, not without that too, Not buddy. without consent. <laughs> <laughs> I think some top contenders are also sushi. Mm-hmm. Very erotic. And... See, that's where I feel like I, like, lose out on this game is I don't think of, like, the eroticism of the food. I think of nourishment replenishment <laughs> i don't think of sushi as being erotic i think but, so, you know there are certain seafoods that are aphrodisiacs yeah all i'm saying is i'm not choosing that because of that fact eroticism. Okay, yes. well, like if it, if it was for eroticism what would it be i would say like chocolate covered fruit <laughs> like, chocolate covered the, fruit let's is put messy. some chocolate on this fruit <laughs> yeah. Real sexy here. yeah i mean like chocolate sauce and fresh fruit man. Yeah, like, okay. it's sweet it's you can like you can put chocolate on well, what would somebody? be your three fruits strawberries uh-huh. <laughs> strawberries more strawberries <laughs> and i would still choose herbies 
Strawberry. Arby's isn't a fruit. <laughs> <laughs> so you have strawberries? Bananas for penetration. As you do. I think pineapples are very good. And they'll, feel, and they'll make you taste good. That's true. So Horror. you would have pineapple, strawberry, and bananas in your orgy. Um, sure. Okay. I wasn't sure about bananas, but it's funny enough to leave it in. I feel like <laughs> that'd be a make a, that'd make a good smoothie. That would make a good smoothie. True, and yeah, and then we can all have smoothies later. Mmm. Maybe a nice protein shake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's some whey. Get back in there. <laughs> some neo energy. Go okay. Get and you would back in there. <laughs> Gross. Like toweling someone yeah. off. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> You're doing well, but I'm gonna need you to do a little less eye contact. You're freaking everybody out. <laughs> I think we all need an orgy coach. We do. I, w- I honestly, I would just want to like sit down and hear someone kind of talk about like the etiquettes of an orgy. Not necessarily being one, but like just like here, like okay, so like, wh- what are the rules? What are the ground rules? Does everyone need to show up at a certain time just so everyone can hear the lay of the land? Is there- I kind of just want to go to one and not participate. Really? Yeah. You'd, be, you'd be a lurker, huh? Yeah. <laughs> we Plus, should- I like watching people have sex. <laughs> That's fair. That's valid. We should set up like a uh, a one way mirror orgy. I think that's a thing. S- that, like a focus that's room. A thing. I feel like that just like gets into a gray area of like, do people know that we're do people know that we're there? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. That's we'll- like already a thing in strip clubs mm-hmm. and like sex clubs. Neat. I would still say Arby's is the sexiest food. Really? That feels Looks like-, like pussy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so does all of the pussy. Exactly. I don't know why adding foods. more pussy on top of it is a bad thing. That's and fair. we can't actually physically eat the vaginal mm-hmm. tissues. Mm-hmm. It's not that kind of a party then. Yeah, no, we're not doing a cannibal party. However, Hannibal would definitely be at my orgy. Mm. Oh, shit. Because I bet that guy is great in the sack. I think if I'm going sexy, I'm going to build up a nice charcuterie board. Oh, Again, yeah. That's still, fair. still going on my light theme. Yeah. But I'll, I'll add cheeses. I'll add cheeses, various grapes, crackers, salami. Mm. Like, get real <laughs> get real nice and pretty mm-hmm. with it. Oh, yeah. This is the second time you've brought up salami. Is there a... It's making me hot. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I like salami. Salami. <laughs> salami makes me hard. <laughs> Just eating a sandwich. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, salami. Call me mommy. Mm. Salami mommy. Slap my salami. He's a commie. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> if you haven't watched Bojack Horseman, would recommend. See, now it ties into what we're doing because that's a TV show. Yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> it was all about the industry all along. And buzz for room tone. What? That was cute. I'll cut that in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Austin Swain. I'm an animator and a video production specialist in commercial advertising. And a fun fact, the highly proclaimed king of writing dialogue, Quentin Tarantino, was offered the job to direct a film known as Men in Black, but he hmm. turned it down. That would have been fun. Wait, like he just recently got offered? No. Or like in like the beginning? Like when they were making okay. Men in Black, they were like, maybe Quentin Tarantino? And That'd be fun. That would have been what, awesome. Yeah. I, I would like to visit that <laughs> alternate universe and see the Quentin Tarantino directed Men in Black. You know, that's the second time Will Smith lost out on an opportunity to work with Quentin. Oh, yeah? Originally, he was asked to be the role of Django in Django Unchained. Mm. Interesting. But Will Smith was not for it. <laughs> Probably for the best, because Will Smith kind of sucks. And Jamie Foxx yeah. fucking killed it. He really yeah. did. I think he was perfect for that role. I think I, like, f- that's where, like, I gained my, like, fandom for Jamie Foxx. Totally. He does. <laughs> yeah, I think he was really good in that, and I think he was, I gained a lot of respect for him in Baby Driver as well. Yeah. I thought he did well in that. And Due Date. And, and due, due date, date. Fuck, yeah. yeah. I forgot about due date. <laughs> due date rules. Due date is like such an underappreciated. It really is. Dumb movie. My name is Maddie. I'm here because I'm funny sometimes. <laughs> and I just ordered a movie, one of my favorite movies of all time. I just ordered on DVD finally, because usually every time I look it up, it's selling for like 60 to $80 because it's such a hot commodity for some reason even though 
I've never even heard anyone besides me talk about it. Long story short, it's called The Fall and it stars Lee Pace and it was presented, which we got to learn all about what presented means, presented by David Fincher and Spike Jones. What does presented mean? So we basically figured out that it's like a big name, like David Fincher or Spike Jones, like announcing or attaching their name to a lesser known film in an mm-hmm. attempt to like... Get. show people that like hey we watched it we like it okay this is like we don't have anything to do with it mm-hmm. yeah. but we liked it <laughs> so it's funny because like their names now are on the box yeah. it's like right. spike jones and david fincher present the fall right i wonder if there has to be a cost for that you know like more than it's just like a name it's like oh hey i really like this product it's like an investment you know, like, oh, I really like this project so much. Yeah, um, it said they can, all, like, they also are sometimes executive producers. Mm, right. But I don't think either of these guys were in this movie. But it was crazy, like, coming across this movie that I've been a fan of for so long and seeing, like, Spike Jones's name on it. And I'm like, yeah. the fucking bitch is everywhere. No kidding. So so that's going to be my next dinner theater movie. when okay. I get, Hopefully it gets here. Hell yeah. I'm excited. I ordered on eBay, so hopefully eBay doesn't suck. And I've been loving, like, off of our, you know, kind of jackass hole, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we've been looking more into Spike Jonze's work. And, like, I know, Austin, that you're a really big fan of her and Mm -hmm. things like that. And so I think we're going to, you know, he's got a really, like, interesting repertoire. Um, And we were looking at his filmography today, and I realized that he directed my favorite commercial of all time, Mm -hmm. which is, uh, it's Kenzo World. It's a, it's a fragrance, so it's a perfume commercial that came out a few years ago. I'll link it. It's a hoot. It is. It's very fun. Yeah, I don't think I've seen it. I'll show it to you. But yeah, so that's what I'm excited for. And I have a little bit of a cold, so if I sound nasally, that's why. And you can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Get fucked. My name is Austin Rapeza. I'm an amateur filmmaker, currently working in the broadcast space. Uh, fun fact about myself, I recently purchased a book called A Vast Pointless Gyration of Radioactive Rocks and Gas in Which You Happen to Occur, a book created by the Daniels, the same people who created everything everywhere all at once. And it's supposed to expand the idea of the multiverse and, I guess, nihilism. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> about how there's just all these things out there and nothing matters, and yet everything matters to you. And so I've been really enjoying reading that book. Really cool. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to hear. Have you started reading it? Yep. How, what is like the layout of it? The layout's very chaotic. Um, That makes sense. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, It's weird because it it really does feel like it's taking you on a journey Mm. by the layouts of its pages. Cool. And just kind of like the text. And it's like. You're reading about yourself in a way. Oh. It's like you're probably sitting in a room right now reading this book and thinking, oh, what can I get out? You know, whatever. And it's mm-hmm. like, huh, yeah, okay, this is this is fun. This is interesting. And they, um, again, so far from what I've read, they're trying to put you in perspective of, like, your existence. Really cool. Yeah. And I think it's a similar setup to the movie where it's like everything in the world is so minuscule to the grand scheme of things. And you are part of that. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm excited to hear what you think of the book because I feel like that the movie really did a pretty good job of kind of laying that groundwork and kind mm-hmm. of being like, hey, what if this? Yeah. You know, like just kind of what if. And, you know, I feel like we were kind of left to our own devices to kind of explore what that meant to us. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like there were a lot of times in the movie where I felt kind of lost as far as what their message was, at least at certain points. And so, yeah, yeah, I'll be interested to hear kind of what you take out of this next installment. I think based off what I've seen, the movie, I mean, I I think the message really is like, you are so minuscule and a grain of sand in the cosmic theme of things that what you do in reality doesn't really matter. You are a tiny, worthless piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But... That doesn't have to be a bad thing. Yeah, that doesn't mean you don't have to try. Yeah, and it, it doesn't mean that like things can't be important to you mm-hmm. because that's just what we do. You know, that's what's what's it called? Uh, Cyphers, Cyphers is boulder. You know, we roll the 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 boulder up the mountain um, just for it to come back down, but like that's okay. Yeah, because like that's just that's how we live. You know. That's, that's our, that's, we have to determine what, what that boulder is. Yeah. You know, and although it will come down, 
it's it's okay because it's your mission it's your life's purpose you chose the boulder you chose how you pushed it you chose how you perceived your journey as Mm -hmm. you did so yeah i like that and you can either be on the ground hanging out with the boulder or you can keep pushing it yeah it's just to pass the time (laughs) (laughs) so what are we doing here today so we're doing role play Mm -hmm. yeah finally oh yeah you guys, we've been talking about this for so long, like yeah. getting into the mindset of these characters that like we've been exploring. And so, you know, we spent the last, sorry, I just spilled coffee all over myself. I'm so excited. We, we just spent the last, you know, weeks deciding this story, laying it out in front of us, knowing now we know like which characters are going to be talking, but we don't know what the hell they're going to say. Mm-hmm. So we've been talking about this for a long time, doing some role playing you know, get into the minds of our characters and let's just like have a conversation, see what happens, see what's funny. How our format's going to be is two of the room tone hosts will be playing actors while the other plays a director who will stop uh, within the scene and give notes. We are not going to limit it only to the director. Uh, the actors might also stop as well. And let it be known, we are not actors. Mm, by far. <laughs> and this is not planned out. We are improv yep. Yeah, And the extent of our improv uh, expertise is like Dungeons and Dragons home games and late night episodes of Whose Line Is It Anyway? Yeah, yep. so I watched Barry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I've seen watch profes- Barry on HBO. <laughs> I've seen professional actors act like they are bad at acting. Yeah. So with that in mind, let's explore some scenes. Let's do it. I think a good way to start this would probably be kind of establishing a goal. Where do we want to be at the end of this episode or the end of this work time? Well, I know our, you know, this, the kind of the first step that we've decided for our pre-production is to get a script going. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've had a conversation outside of the show that we're going to, you know, we're kind of kind of kick things off today, get some ideas for dialogue, get some ideas of direction and motivations. And then we'll probably start kind of drafting a script outside of the show. And, um, you know, once a week, we'll kind of come together and take a look at how the script is looking so far. And then we'll come on to the show and kind of talk to you guys about where we're at in the process and, you know, kind of what's coming up next. All right. um, so I think our goal for today is just start getting some inspiration for you know the tone the motivations of the characters yeah maybe some fun jokes yeah I like that. throw some shit at a wall and see what sticks mm. <laughs> yeah i think the goal should be to have fun fuck yeah we're already there baby <laughs> hell yes so outside of the show the three of us came together and talked about you know what would be a good way to go through these role playing and and the main idea is not to write the whole script right now is just to get an idea of kind of the tone and the story structure. And so what we wanted to do is kind of take three main story beats and focus on a couple of characters within those and jump into the roles of those and just kind of see what happens as far as dialogue. And so the first conversation that we wanted to kind of act out and improv Mm -hmm. is the meeting of David and Donnie. Yeah. David the uh, the black sheep coming into the household mm-hmm. just learned that his father's died mm-hmm. um, talking to his older brother, Donnie, yeah. who is kind of the organizer of this event and kind of, you know, our nuclear family, mm-hmm. outgoing Schmidt-esque kind of a guy. So to be specific, we are in the room where David and Donnie go to during our first round of group ups, where we group up David and Donnie uh carol lonnie and johnny and zoe and nicole correct that's right sweet so this is the scene yeah where david and zoe have just walked through the door Mm -hmm. and they've just found out that dad's dead Mm -hmm. so now i think uh david kind of walks up to donnie and we're about to find out what they talk about yeah who wants to play who? I, I think you two should be them. I was actually going to suggest if you wanted to play Donnie. I feel like you've been like really oh, okay. feeling that role. You and, might have the best grasp of who Donnie is. Oh, okay. And I was thinking I play David. Okay. And that way you and I can banter. Sure. And cool. then you will play director. Uh, and you kind of give us notes as we perform. Cool. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> as we... Perform. They are they are ready. They are peacocking We're, away. Yeah. I feel like my character would definitely have his pants off. Yeah, true. <laughs> I think we should all take our pants off. I love family. So, so Maddie's going to be playing Donnie, 
Yep. Uh, Austin is going to be playing David. Ooh, 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 ooh. And I'll be kind of here giving notes, mostly just mostly just letting it happen. But uh, if I laugh, I guess we'll make note that that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so in a previous episode, we put together kind of Dungeons and Dragons character sheets for each of these characters. And so um, Maddie and Austin are going to be reviewing those now and taking a look. So whenever you guys are ready, maybe give us uh, give us a little introduction into the kind of character you're going to be playing and a little bit of, you know, where, what your mindset is going into this conversation. So I'm going to be playing David, uh, David Brinkman, and some of the personality traits that we gave him uh, is he's sarcastic, uh, smart, logical, funny, charming, uh, but a little bit ignorant um, and a little bit self-centered. Sure. I think that's a good way to describe him. Yeah, that feels right. And what what's kind of your mind? What's what's David's mindset going into this conversation so i think david is pretty angry right now angry and confused because he also felt like he had a special relationship with his father um was upset that he didn't know that his father is dead yeah um and that no one really told him what was going on and a little bit embarrassed i think too because he's the only one not dressed in funeral attire right mm-hmm. uh him and zoe so <laughs> yeah yeah that's what i'm gonna play it as hell yes and maddie who are you playing I will be playing the older brother, Donnie, who is basically the himbo of the group. He's kind of nuclear family obsessed. Um, He's confident, flamboyant, oblivious, naive, and a little bit braggadocious. But in his core, his values are good. He wants what's best for everybody, even if he doesn't know how to show it. Mm -hmm. Um... He might have a big dong as well. Yeah. <laughs> work work that in if you so, would. So, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to play up that energy. If you can't see it, Maddie's just constantly grabbing her crotch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I think he, I think Donnie is feeling in this moment, I think he is prepared for david's Mm. aggression Mm. so he's kind of hyped himself up as well like he's kind of like oh shit we're gonna fight yeah like oh like what's gonna happen yeah so i think he's a little bit in that like hostile headspace Mm. but i think at his core he's he wants to have a good evening i think he wants this to go well he wants everything to go smoothly Mm -hmm. but he's also still mad at david yeah would you say that donnie is a little bit happy though to see David since they are a bit of strange and he hasn't seen his brother in a long time. Would there be a little bit of happiness? I'm asking you. Um, I'm trying to think of like what their first interaction is like what their like the first thing mm-hmm. they say to each other is. Well, the first thing I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I may be wrong. Is Donnie the one who announces that he's that their father is dead after that silence? While they're in like the group, we don't know. We don't know. What if, like, let's just say for now, uh, let's humor the idea that Donnie is the one who breaks it to David. Okay. So they haven't like had a conversation, they haven't talked at all before this. Yeah. That's what I kind of imagine. Let's start the scene there. And I would maybe even encourage you guys to flip over the character sheet so that you're not like tempted to read them and you can. I, I will say there's nothing on here that I think is like useful yeah, for yeah sure. no, I, that totally makes sense i'm sarcastic yeah <laughs> I'm, i have a big dong question mark he's, i know donnie i know he, i've seen it yeah. he says sarcastically yes i have a big dong yeah <laughs> so as mr director mm-hmm. i will start off the scene all right david has just learned of his father's death and approaches older brother donnie dude what the fuck dad's dead Dude, why haven't you been around? What the fuck do you mean? Why haven't you been around? Why didn't you tell me dad was dead? Why didn't you ask? Am I supposed to ask every single fucking day? Is dad dead? Go, no. Let's go in the room. Let's go over here. I'm yeah. so pissed. Z- Zoe, please just just wait out here. <laughs> Zoe, please um please have some have some hors d'oeuvres. Uh, um okay. my, my wife made them. Um they're very good. Yes. Nice to right, meet Nicole? you. Right, Nicole? Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I'll be right back. Dave, or Donnie, come on, let's go. We enter a different room. (laughs) (laughs) David, you can't expect 
I'm going to expect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to fucking expect. How dare you? Why didn't you tell me dad was dead? You know how important he was to me. Then why aren't you ever here? Then why aren't you ever here? Why do you think I'm not here? This family is unbearable. It's too much. You call us unbearable, and yet you're pissed that one of us is dead? You know I fucking love dad. Don't you fucking go there. I don't know you love dad. <laughs> if only you fucking knew. If only you fucking knew. Dad and I had one of the closest relationships out of this whole family. Growing up, Do you him think and I he's going like to be this. that hostile? Probably not. Probably not. I, I, I feel like your your like energy is throwing me off. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect him to come in so hot. <laughs> and I mean, if that's, that's fair, that's fair. Director, let's director. let's hear it. Hmm. I mean, I think it's it's hostile energy. Yeah. I think there is going to be hostile energy, but maybe a little more in the subtext. Maybe I'm playing myself too much because I feel like if I obtain that information, I would be pissed. Right. And I mean, what does Donnie have to say to like? defend himself to that besides you weren't around i feel like yeah you weren't around i'm happy you're here now maybe just chill out and have a snack you never really showed that you <laughs> cared like i think there's yeah. like a level of like you never showed that you cared so why do you care now yeah like, right. why and is this a big deal now i don't understand your, yeah you took yourself out of this family yeah. how is it our responsibility to pull you back in yeah yeah something I, like that i think I mean, maybe it's like the same argument all around because like it, it is just kind of shitty to like not tell your sibling that someone very significant in your family has died. Yeah, right. but I also can see like Donnie trying to like gaslight David a little bit, right? And like saying like you, you didn't have a relationship with that, <laughs> right? Totally. Yeah. Like I'm the star child. Yeah, exactly. Donnie sees himself as I had this special day with dad. I had like these special times with dad. He's just a spawn. Yeah. I'm the child. Yeah. Right? You're David. Yeah. I brought you in. I did the bare minimum to include you in this. And honestly, that's all mm -hmm. I needed to do. So how did, uh, remind me, how did David get to the house or did we not even, he drove there. I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Leave that in. Yeah. <laughs> he was invited. He was invited by whom? I think we decided to not worry about it. Okay. Yeah. So then we don't have to worry about it. Uh, I'm just trying to think of other things to give Donnie. Yeah. Let's, I, let's pick up from going into the other room. As a note, as the director, mm -hmm. I was also thinking that this might be a good place to pepper in some of the details of the ceremony. Because David and Donnie both know what tonight's going to be now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so what what clues can we give to the audience? And can they discuss amongst each other? You came to your father's funeral and you brought an outsider. I didn't know it was our father's funeral. <laughs> 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 we, have not, we haven't established that yet. You... David, you've been away from this family for an extended period of time. Have you ever thought there was a reason for that? I don't know what it could be. Yeah, I wonder what it could be. No, I really don't get it. I think that we have always supported you and loved you, and you just don't like us. I think within this scene, sorry to like cut it off. I think within the scene, I think you're right. It would be really funny if Donnie was kind of like doing something to prepare the body um, cause for some reason I imagine like you, right when you said that, like pulling duct tape, like <laughs> you should have, you know, whatever, whatever, yeah, whatever, you sure. know, just doing something really goofy. Right. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I, I was even thinking of something along the lines of like David saying something like, dude, and I brought my girlfriend here. Do you think she's going to be able to handle this shit? Yeah. Like just kind of like starting to kind of lead up to like, tonight's going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we can write that minutia later. Yeah. Right. I was just trying to give you guys fodder. I just remembered we did have one more piece of dialogue before this conversation. It was with Zoe and David. Uh, and it was brief. We don't have to like go into it, but I do want to establish that David does go to Zoe and like, sorry, I, it's going to get weird. Like, whatever. I didn't know yeah. this was a funeral. Yeah. And yeah. again, you know, the, the, the goal of today isn't to write every single line of dialogue. Mm -hmm. It's just to start to get an idea of the tone and all that. You're right. You're right. And uh, I don't really think that David and Donnie will like talk for that long. No, honestly. I think yeah. yeah. Like I think that it'll kind of be that well, exchange. What are we trying to establish within this scene? We're trying to establish that Donnie is one preparing for the body 
um, which that was just kind of thrown in today. But I think that would be a fun thing to do. Two, we're establishing that David is upset with Donnie because mm-hmm. that will come again later during the dinner scene. Right. Establish essentially that David has separated himself from the family for so long because this is the first place we can learn that. And that the family doesn't get why David is apart from them. Okay. Yeah, sure. That's that's mm-hmm. that's a really good point. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And then we're also establishing that there will be a dinner. Yes. Yeah. This afternoon. Yes. And that there is like a quote unquote ceremony. And there's yeah, yes. and something weird's gonna happen. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So we just get through those beats. Yes. And I think moving <laughs> forward, I think we should establish those goals at the beginning of role playing. That's I one thing so I, I had also thought about, but I forgot. As our actors, is there anything do you guys want to go for it again with these things in mind? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's try it again. Yeah. All right. So uh, our scene begins. David has just learned of his father's death. He stomps towards his older brother, Donnie. Donnie, Donnie, get over here. Hi, David. I didn't expect you to come. Why didn't you tell me dad was dead? Did you ask? Did I ask? When was I supposed to ask? How was I supposed to ask? Who asked a question like that? You know. Oh, is dad dead? David, maybe if you were a bigger part of this family, oh we wouldn't God. have to do this conversation. Maybe you would just know. Can you please quit patronizing me just for 10 seconds, please? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> David. <laughs> <laughs> I David, you are not a part of this. You have taken yourself away from this family. Yeah, why would I want to take myself away from this family? Why would I want to leave all this craziness? I don't know. I think we have a nice family. Yeah, I I bet you do think we have a nice family. I do. Yeah. See. See yeah. how he talks to me. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna step back a bit. I felt that was a little weird on my part. Yeah, I bet you do think we have a nice family. <laughs> we do. Yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> uh, and take two. <laughs> and take two. Okay, I'm liking where that direction was going. I like your Donnie. I, I love. Oh, thanks. I love Donnie asking questions rather than giving answers yeah he's like the worst yeah yeah, yeah in that <laughs> sense like why would you tell me dad was it why didn't you ask right what <laughs> right and like that's such a ridiculous like thing to even yeah like ask for well like, you weren't even here so i don't know what you expected from me i love that your donnie is manipulative but he's horrible at it <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just me. <laughs> okay, I think uh, I think my uh, and I know I'm not playing the director right now. But I think my only note is I would add more himbo. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to that's like. Tough. That's mm-hmm. what I'm trying to figure out how to do. Donnie's on it. Like we love him, but he's gonna be hard to write. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Just because he's like he teeters on the edge of being apathetic mm-hmm. in his himbo ness. Yeah. yeah, which makes it kind of tricky. It does. We'll have to rewatch New Girl. <laughs> yeah, it'll be easier to write him than play him on the spot as yeah. someone who's not an actor. Uh, cool. Is uh, do you guys want to shake that out anymore? I'm trying to think. I feel like we should. Yeah, I think. Yeah, you, I'll let you guys figure out where you want to start. Yeah, can I start at this time? Yeah. David, how nice of you to join us. Donnie, what the fuck is that? Actually, dead? No, we just are throwing this party. For no reason. That was a little sarcastic, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> that was too David. I was saying, like, uh, See, uh, uh, I, I, I was totally thrown off by you guys thinking I was going to play Donnie. Do you I, want me to play Donnie? Uh, the fact that I keep calling you David. <laughs> maybe. I mean, I feel like sign. maybe let's just try it for let's this one. Right. Right, 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 yeah, I was not prepared to play we're Donnie. Exploring, <laughs> we're, we're exploring here. We're learning. Yeah. What the hell, Donald? First of all, it's Donnie. Don. Nee. What's the issue? Why didn't you tell me Dad's dead? It didn't come up. What do you mean it didn't come up? I'm easily reachable by phone. Yeah. And, and, and... Fuck. I, well, Donnie is kind of hard, isn't he? I, I'm trying to play a himbo, but... Um, yeah. Just, like, have a mental picture of Fat Thor in your head. I'm that trying kind to, of I'm, helps. I'm literally thinking Schmidt. Like yeah. Or Schmidt, yeah. That's, like, my, like, Fat tether. Schmidt. Fat, Fat Schmidt, Schmidt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I would maybe stray away from exploring, like why specifically Donnie didn't tell him. Yeah, let's try to just, like, have an actual conversation. Okay. David has just learned that his father is dead. Him and his older brother Donnie meet. So I brought my girlfriend to my father's funeral, unintentionally. Oh, she's very lovely. What's her name? Don't, oh, she's very lovely, me. 
You don't know her. What's I, the problem? What's I issue? brought my girlfriend to an event that's going to get interesting very quickly. Don't you think I should have been warned about this? Interesting. What, the funeral? What? Yes, the funeral. It's part of our tradition. It's part of our custom. Are you really? It is not part of her tradition. Oh, pish posh. She'll be fine. Pish posh. Can you believe this fucking guy? <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe this fucking mook? <laughs> what the fuck? Pish posh, huh? <laughs> I guess I'll just tell her that she has to leave, maybe? What? No, we have plenty of food. <laughs> As if that's the issue. <laughs> <laughs> What's the issue? Dad? Dad? Yes, Dad. It'll be fine. Everything will be fine. It's mm-hmm. fine. I'm very angry with you, Donnie. David, come on. Let's just have a good time. Let's celebrate Dad's life. This is what we're here for. Come on. You know he would. I mean, I know he would want it, but you know too, right? What do you mean by that? I was closest with Dad. I know he would want want it. You were closest with Dad? Uh, yeah. I'm the oldest. Oh, Oh, interesting. I didn't think it was that interesting, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> and scene. <laughs> sure. <laughs> How was the himbo there? Was yeah, that felt better. Yeah, better. he felt good. He felt good. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got there. Yeah, I don't know what else they're like. Gonna, I don't think they're going to really talk about that much. No, I don't. No. Th- I, you know, I think just kind of get those tensions out there. Lay. I think you guys did great at like laying out the tension, laying down the groundwork for like this is about to be a weird fucking evening. Yeah, I think it's also good that we're getting an idea of like the character type. Yeah, that we're going for. I mean, like I know we have like the words like himbo, but I feel like it's a little bit different hearing it, mm-hmm. right? Uh, compared to like writing it. Yeah. And Mm so I I imagine him just kind of very like similar to what we said before, ignoring questions with questions. Yeah. 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 And Uh, just like oblivious. And yeah, I agree. Very oblivious. Very Mm -hmm. like doesn't really understand the gravity of their family's traditions and find it more offensive that he's trying to hide it rather than. uh, Express and and be full forth. Yeah, totally. Right. I I love this is a fun step to take because like you said, it's, you know, it's one thing to write himbo. It's another thing to be it. Yeah. It's and another so, thing to live, breathe, yeah. love it. <laughs> like the real himbo lifestyle. Live, I also laugh, think this himbo. is going to be pretty uh, beneficial for our actors when we do have them. So we all kind of have like a good idea of like, and then they can feel good about themselves because of how much we suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll if be- you want to hear us do it, <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. It'll be fun when we do hire actors. Cause then we can just say, Oh, well, just listen to 25 hours of our podcast and you'll have a great idea of what we want from you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So, like, what, what, Mr. Director, what would you say our, your notes are for both the David and Donnie character as we presented them to you right now? I have none. I, have none. I mean, you know, I, I think they felt like bickering brothers. Mm-hmm. They, they got, you know, you guys got that information out mm-hmm. and... I mean, we'll make it, maybe we'll make it funnier later. You know, I just it's realized. It's hard to be funny oh, on totally. the spot like totally. that. I think we all grew up without brothers in a way. You're Very an true. only child. Uh, I have just sisters. You have just sisters. I have brothers, but like I have never lived with them. Mm. Uh, and I actually just recently discovered one who lives in Mexico. Crazy. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, hey. <laughs> discovered a brother. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. A long lost hermano. So I guess I just realized like we don't really. We have no experience. Yeah. With, yeah. Like brother arguments. <laughs> no. We're so, just... if you, so if you know anyone with a brother, uh, write into the show and tell us what what is that like? I kind of just am picturing Thor and Loki. I honestly. imagine that too. That's, fair. Yeah. That's pretty much what I was trying to Date. envision. That's mm. actually a very apt description. I know. I was not ready. I'm very smart. You're very smart. And so then Donnie would be the Thor archetype and David would would be be the Loki. Loki. Oh, wow. Black sheep. Black sheep. (laughs) I I love that. Which, again, is why I was very surprised when you were like, I think you should play Donnie. Well, I just think every time we've talked about characters, you like hopped on like Donnie's character. Like you you seemed the most excited when we talk about Donnie. Interesting. And you you were the first one to pitch his character. Yeah. And like... I know you were the least excited about David. That's fair. 
but I'm the most like David. Yeah, you yeah. tried to cut David out. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> doesn't so that just I, sum it up? <laughs> yeah, so I guess I just figured like, oh, maybe David would be like the the role to play for me. We'll yeah. Fi- okay. We figured it. Cool. Out. Yeah. What What are we feeling now? Like, do we, we want to move, wanna move, on, move to on, the on to the next, the next one? Yeah. yeah let's beat? keep this flow going. Hell like, yeah. What's the next scene that we're doing? So the majority of the next scene is Zoe talking with Nicole mm-hmm. in the kitchen. Um, and simultaneous to that is Lonnie talking to Johnny. Mm-hmm. So the aunt and the nephew uh, are out in the garage smoking the reefer. And I think you need to be one of the stoners. You yeah. should be Lonnie. You be Johnny. Director, cut. Made the call. I let me be Lonnie. Lonnie, you'll I be f- the bad influence. I feel like I have my edgy girl vibe going, and I'm going to yes. activate my inner pathetic. <laughs> wow, that was fast. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Activation needed. Didn't have to go far. <laughs> Can you give us a brief description of uh, Johnny, the character you'll be playing, Swain? <clears throat> um, yeah, I am Johnny Knoxville Brinkman. Yes, Johnny Knoxville. Um, my dad's name is Donnie. Uh, my mom's name is Nicole. The family's kind of weird i try not to pay attention um i'm on i'm on the robotics team at my high school but no one wants me to be on their team and so i just kind of you know i just kind of tinker and do most of my spend most of my days just kind of sitting at home and dinking around i guess i like that that was pathetic but nobody wants me to be on their team (laughs) jesus all right uh that was good i will be auditioning for Lonnie. <laughs> uh, the lesbian? Yes. Quick overview. Oh, her and I already have a lot in common. True. Both love puss. Yeah. Um, just a quick overview of Lonnie. Uh, she's a bit of a wild spirit. Uh, she has a shit ton of luck. I'm going to get into my uh, inner Lonnie. Ready? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so my mindset going into this conversation is... Um, I'm bored. You're bored. Mm-hmm. I, I admire my aunt. I think she's, I th- um, you know, I, I admire my aunt. I think she's cool. What's your mindset going into this conversation? My mindset is I'm a little bit frustrated because we just had an argument with my mom, Carol, um, where we compared each other's addictions. I wasn't not too a fan of it. Yeah. And I'm also feeling a little hurt because, um, my exclusion, uh, to the ceremonial, Okay. events that happens right. when one of our family member dies feeling a little bit upset that i wasn't included uh automatically it wasn't yeah. like i had the choice mm-hmm. and so what's and so what's the main thing a couple of main things that we're trying to establish with this scene with this interaction i think what we're trying to establish is the kind of uh resentment that lonnie has with her two brothers um and we're also trying to get johnny stoned off his ass yeah establish that yeah that johnny cannot take a hit (laughs) (laughs) all right that'll be fun and i think that lonnie we need to like also have lonnie's chillness come out i agree i agree somehow like she can't just be a downer yeah no i don't think she's like stomping around being like they're not inviting me but it's it's more so like she's using johnny to vent and yeah right yeah like she's spiteful yeah. I think of her as being like a funny venter, like kind of like me when I'm angry, mm. like yeah, just says ridiculous shit yeah. instead of like actually being like irate. I don't know. Yeah. And mm-hmm. is like the voice of reason. I think for a lot of the story, she's very logical. Yeah. Action. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are we, what are we doing out here? Shut up, kid. Hold on. Get over here. What is. <laughs> Shut up, kid. Hold on. <laughs> is, is that. Uh, that looks like pot. Pot? Is that really what you call it? Um. Here, man, here's some green. No, I, that was a joke. Thanks. Um. Oh, you hold it like this. There you go. <laughs> oh, shit. Is this your first time smoking? No. <laughs> How old are you? Like 15 now? Here is your pot. Thanks. God, it must be torturous living with your dad. Yeah, he... Yeah, he sucks. Does he know you spoke pot? No, I, I've been able to... I've been able to keep that from him. Mm. You don't well, smoke pot. Who are you? 
I'm the director. <laughs> no, Should I know. Should you say something like... Well, because I asked him, like, this is your first time smoking? He's like, no, I smoked before. Yeah, it's like, but he's lying. Well, yeah, yeah. He's, tr- he's trying to impress his aunt. Right, but maybe after you took the first hit, you'd be more like, no, I'm, I have Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, true. Uh, no, I, I, I don't smoke pot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't smoke pot. I don't smoke pot never. <laughs> All right. Oh shit! You better not fucking tell your dad. No way. I hate. T- I hate that guy. You hate your dad? Yeah, he's always he's always making me go out on like dumb family trips and and like putting me in stupid outfits for his pictures. Here, hand me that. You sound like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Ow! Yeah, your dad can be pretty frustrating. Try growing up with him. Ah, uh, I don't want to. It's it's a little fucked up that he didn't let me help with the body. Although, like, dad and I had a pretty close relationship. He even asked. That's kind of fucked. How's Johnny feeling right now? Am I supposed to be feeling like this? Yeah, it's normal. <laughs> Don't even ask how you're no. feeling. That's nice, normal. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> yes. I, f- I figure for a little bit of this too, like Johnny's going to be pretty quiet and yeah. it's kind of like letting Lonnie vent. I- and then at some point he'll come back and be like, wow, are the walls moving? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do like the thought of like, like, like Johnny just kind of like leaning back and forth as <laughs> yeah, like we get this like close up of Lonnie and she's just going and going and yeah. going in the background Johnny's just like turning upside down oh my God. <laughs> that'd be such a great Zolly yeah <laughs> I just think it's really fucked up how Donnie didn't even include me F- fucked up yeah fucked up but got really upset when David wasn't around it's not even like he fucking called him <sighs> Yeah, yeah, wow. God, and David's so fucking clueless. At least he has the opportunity to. He just doesn't want to. Am I supposed to be feeling like this? Yeah, no, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> um, you take another hit. Oh. Okay. Here, kid, hold it like this. Yeah, there we go. Oh, oh, yeah. I, that, that was bad. That's no, that bad. looks cool. That was bad dialogue on my part because we weren't going to establish that. Yeah, it's smooth. It's really smooth. Thanks. It's good. <laughs> I kind of feel like a swirly cloud. I feel like that's perfect. Yeah. I yeah, feel I like think we we're did great. on the same page mm-hmm. with how this interaction is yeah, going. Yeah, I think we did great. Oh, hold on. <sighs> Do you hear? Do you hear footsteps? Oh shit! Put that away. That's definitely my dad. Donnie walks in. <laughs> Improv. <laughs> Improv. Children <laughs> of the court. Get over Children, here. Hello, come sir. to dinner. Hello, sir. <laughs> 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 just staring into Johnny's eyes. Johnny okay. and Donnie just shared a moment. Yeah, audience who's listening to this and can't see it. Donnie is death staring at Johnny, trying to figure out if something's wrong with him, and Johnny is just blinking rapidly. I and just not stared anything. at her and blinked as fast as I could. And I think that's pretty accurate. That's fair. Hi, sir. Hi, and then dad. he just goes like. Anyways, dinner. yeah, I'm moving on. Yeah. All right, sweet. We did great. Yeah, I like that. Do we want to take on our third beat? Sure. The dinner. So, um, last scene that we want we, that we wanted to improv is I think we each take a sibling, mm-hmm. and we're now at the dinner table and discussing, or you know, just kind of arguing about dad and about just kind of how that shit life. went about life and just yeah, just arguing. Okay, can I assign characters? Assign away. I think I should be Donnie. Maddie should be Lonnie. And uh, Swain should be David. What's up? I'm the black sheep. That's what I was going to say. Thought you were going to just end with... What's the, up? I'm black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, buddy, we've been thinking about this character way different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, David is white. <laughs> <laughs> white bread. So I'm David Brinkman. My family doesn't talk to me mostly because I've left because they're all a bunch of fucking weirdos. I'm Donnie. I am super A1 about family. And I get a little uh, little anxious when things don't go my way. 
I'm Lonnie, and as much as I don't want to be here, I also want to be getting credit for being a part of this family. Mm. And I thought I was daddy's little girl, and I'm not going to take that title away lightly. We're still talking about these characters, right? Not us. I think so. <laughs> Hardy har har. <laughs> oh, personal wounds. I, I know, it's quite, yeah. It all revealed ourselves a little yeah. bit. I get real mad when I don't get my way. <laughs> That's why we were all on the same page about who should be who. Because <laughs> we're all just these people anyways. Uh, yeah, that tracks. Yeah. So what are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> So how does how how do we want this com okay, what is the goal of this conversation? This is the goal of this conversation, I guess, is to one establish the problem outwardly where everyone Everyone thinks they were the favorites. Yeah, everyone thinks that they're their favorites to only find out that everyone was loved just the same. Yeah. So basically we're gonna be arguing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like this is like the argument. Everyone turn down your mics. <laughs> Every is that, are we like defensive? I think I so. Think, I think we're... Or are we, like, blaming other people for I think things? we're defensive. I, I feel like it's like a it's like a wave of it, of, okay. of, like, both. Because, like, we're defensive in terms of, like, no, we were the dad's favorite. Yeah. And then we're offensive when it comes to saying, like, no, you you should have done this or you should have done that. Da -da 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 -da. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess that's what kind of goes on in my mind. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's I find just want to make sure we're all kind of starting at the same place. Yeah, That totally. makes sense. Yeah, so um one more time, let's go around the table and say who we're who we're gonna be playing. So I'm playing David, the mm -hmm. kind of black sheep of the family. What were some of his personal traits just so we know what to look out for when kind of Some of David's personal traits are that he's sarcastic and logical. He's quite selfish, mm -hmm. um, but because he kind of believes in himself and he believes in his own like self image and he's tried to distance himself from his family because he thinks they're all a little cracked. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be playing Lani, the younger sister who has kind of a hard exterior, but a soft, chewy, gooey middle. Uh -huh. And she doesn't start fights, but she definitely ends them. Mm -hmm. And she thought that she was dad's favorite. And she held that as a point of pride. And she, is not going to be happy that other people want to take that title. Yeah. Um, I'm playing Donnie. He's the himbo of the family, not shy. A little bit flamboyant, very confident in himself. But he's also oblivious, uh, naive, and a bit braggadocious mm -hmm. when it comes to his achievements and or titles that he has. Mm -hmm. He is also the one who's kind of heading up this mm -hmm. ceremony and dad's what not so would you mind donnie starting us off with this yeah i'd love to <clears throat> all right everyone this is uh this is the part of the night where we all go around and talk about why dad was so special to us i could start of course since i'm already up there's so many times where i felt my father's love there's no one good story. Oh my uh, god. But I think the most fondest memory is uh, the day he took me to the racetrack. Uh, we went out for we went out for Baskin Robbins. I got uh, banana, he got Zanzibar chocolate and Hang on. What are you talking about? Um, I'm, I'm finishing a story here, David. And we would combine um, those ice creams together to make a, a banana and chocolate uh, Donnie, combination. Sh Donnie, Donnie, hold, what? shut, shut what? up. Why? What? What? what hold on. Okay, I am going into a really deep and emotional time that I had with our father. I've been putting on this whole event in the tradition of our our in our traditions. Yeah, and you've done a very good job, Donnie. What have you and done? You didn't ask anybody to help out, so you can't for... really blame us. Uh, would you even have? Yes! Dad loved me the most. He took me to the racetrack, too, and we had strawberry and cheesecake ice cream. Took you to the racetrack? Yeah. Which racetrack, huh? The I bet it wasn't the same one. one. 
You son of a bitch. You do not go to the racetrack. You just heard uh, our story. Dad must have told you. Where do you think I tell. got all those cool horse tokens? All right. Lonnie, I knew for sure that you were high, but now I think you're both high. Lonnie, you're really? high? Yeah, so is your freaking son. Johnny! Don't change the fucking subject. Dad took me to the racetrack. He oh, took, yeah? He took you to the racetrack? Did he tell you about his super secret favorite horse uh, dancing? Dancing no- with the sunshine? Yeah. You also know dancing with sunshine? Yeah. I thought that was our horse that we named together and always bet on. Okay, okay. Hold on. We are getting the story twisted. Look. This happened to me. He told me this was our special day. He brought me. He told me not to tell you dweebs. Okay, I might have... I might be high now, but I wasn't high then. You know how Dad felt about marijuana. Yeah, Lonnie <laughs> tisk, tisk. <laughs> Shit, I didn't know how Dad felt. Yeah, about uh, Lonnie knows. You're good. Yeah, I know. I was still on brand. Yeah. Well, I don't know how the two of you heard this story, but I know uh, who could love little old David. His name doesn't even rhyme with Ronnie, but Dad took me. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Fuck you. Dad <laughs> took me to the racetrack. I don't know how you overheard it, but he loved me the most. Told me to keep it secret from you two schmucks. Dad knew you weren't worthy of an Ani name. Yeah, Dad always hated you, David. <sighs> <laughs> well, we still shared that special day, and I was his favorite. Well, actually, I remember that special day because it was the first time I ever smoked a joint. <laughs> <laughs> or something. How we, we, did we discuss like an age? For this special event? I feel like 10 years old is like that moment where you kind of gain those fondness. Okay. Yeah, that's like, like core, core memory age. Yeah. Okay. So I feel like 10, everyone... Everyone, smoke, all everyone smoking 10. joints. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> smoking joints at 10. But also it doesn't have to be 10. I, no, that's, that's what I, I think too. Um, this is the first time I smoked Yeah, no, cut, cut the joint. I remember that day because we had our ice cream and we were walking along looking at the horses and the wind and the trees and dad found a penny on the ground for me and told me it'd be my lucky penny and I pull out the penny and I still have that penny with me every day. All right, what the fuck is going on? Mom, do you mind putting down the bottle and give and giving us the scope? I don't think I think uh, so, so you're right. <laughs> I yeah. already what you're about to say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think Carol interjects yeah. in between that. We probably build to a crescendo and yeah. then Brow! Yeah. Everyone just shut the fuck up. So <laughs> how how would that crescendo go? Dad told me I was his favorite. That I was his favorite. You guys are both fucking wrong and you're ruining this event. It was mint chocolate chip! It was strawberry cheesecake. It was banana and chocolate. Oh my god, you guys are so frustrating. He loved you all the same! He didn't love any of you. (laughs) He didn't love any of you, you son of a bitch. He didn't love any of you. I imagine the only reason why the mom interjects is because she ran out of wine. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like she's just getting a headache from listening to them all bicker. (laughs) Which is fair. I guess I don't know like how that crescendo goes. I mean I think we all scream about random details like that and this then this is essentially slams. a taste of it i feel like we yeah. we all kind of know now uh, in this room where that conversation is going and how it builds up i'm down for the racetrack um yeah. i actually i mean if that he, was called improv my man ow, ow! <laughs> i was gonna say though if i could make a slight change since yeah. he was the tire king maybe it was a car racetrack i could see that yeah automobiles yeah, or I you like know cars. some sort of an, I, I i like the idea of like this event for I, the kids i like it even more if like although this is like him giving them their special day he's still doing something he likes to do which mm-hmm. is like gamble <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. no this is really just ronnie's day yeah and he brought a shitty kid along yeah <laughs> in an effort to like make them kind of fight for his love uh-huh. yeah, like make them make- feel worthy right yeah. and like to pit them against their siblings yeah so maybe we should kind of talk about that realization maybe we should try to improv that like well i think that's what carol kind of comes in with right so carol like, says that what happens after she says actually he didn't love any of you so not that he didn't love any of us but he loved us all the same which i think we could even interject saying which wasn't that much 
Yeah, I mean, however we can demonize dad. Mm-hmm. I suppose, yeah. Maybe So then maybe your word is better. I don't think we should say he loved us all the same. I think mm-hmm. we should say he... Actually, he didn't love any of you. He didn't really care for any of you. <laughs> yeah, he actually thought you guys all kind of sucked. Yeah. Wait, so what if instead of Carol like slamming on the table, what if she starts laughing? Yeah. Oh. And then we all like all the kids stop, look over at her, and she goes, <laughs> "Well, he got his last wish. Yeah, that's all he wanted was to pit you kids against each other, make you fight for his love." God, it'd be so great if she went into like a monologue. <laughs> here and like talked yeah. about like a little bit about her relationship with the tire king you know mm. or you know with ronnie yeah mm-hmm. i mean yeah i I don't know if it has to be even like much longer than than like what i kind of just said i don't know hold on L- let me just pose this idea uh when we go into the writing room yeah when we start writing more dialogue i think it would be very impactful um if carol gave us the monologue of not only like did he not like really care for you guys he wanted to pitch you guys again and see who wanted it more and i think going into like her relationship too with uh ronnie um especially since like she isn't really saying anything throughout the whole film Mm -hmm. and like this is almost kind of like giving us a little bit more of sympathy towards her yeah um, sure because this was like her partner and she knew all this but she's just kind of drowning in her own sorrow right. about it. Right. Yeah. I think we kind of almost have to do something like that. Yeah. Just, that's fair. But I don't think it needs to be a huge thing. I don't think it needs to be a huge thing either. It doesn't need to be like, oh, in 1774, <laughs> he wooed <laughs> right. me right. by blowing on this snatch. And I just, oh, oh you know, <laughs> Carol, <laughs> my snatch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something like that. I just can, a thought. I can vibe with that. Yeah. So if we switch over, I mean, this is. My question is, and maybe maybe if we don't answer this right now, that's fine. But at what point does Zoe leave? I think after the monologue would be the most impactful. Just because like it, we're in this like very deep moment that's full of sorrow and sadness. And then cuts to Zoe. Yeah. I'm going to go. Yeah, so she like finishes yeah. the monologue and yeah. there's that moment of silence where yeah. everyone's taking it in. Yeah. All right, just I like that. Zzz. Yeah. Okay, fuck yeah. Sick. I think that would be like the the funnest way to go. I love that. And now kids hate dad. Kids hate dad. Let's mm-hmm. put him in a hole. Let's put him in a hole. Uh also I will say too uh just so uh, more so for my memory now cuz I keep forgetting shit throughout the conversation as well during the dinner table Zoe's asking questions about right. like the ritual mm. or whatever mm-hmm. um and David is giving that exposition yeah so at some point we'll have to figure out too is like how is Zoe asking because like I would feel awkward if like someone was just yelling at their sibling across the room to be like hey what's with the guy he, right, you know, like right. when I think I mean so we kind of jumped right into like the, hey let's talk about the racetrack but I think there can be like a segment of conversation that's a little bit more kind of civil and standard. Yeah. Like we, we still kind of like want to have them eating food and mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's where we can kind of fit in some of that exposition. That's fair. Like just kind of a more of a standard family conversation. That makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and by civil, do you mean like passive aggressive or is it like, I they're, mean, they're just, making an I mean effort. Civil. I mean, I mean, just, <laughs> that's right. I, yeah, just calmer Sorry, that than screaming right. about rice tracks. Okay, that's fair. I mean, passive aggressive will probably work its way in there. They're all sarcastic little shit bags. Yeah, just but, kind of uh, bickering towards one another. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, being as civil as this family can. Yeah, I just want to lay down the tension too, yeah. especially for like the, the dinner scene is 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 our symphony right now. Yeah, and like just laying it all out. Yeah, and getting that vibe straight away. I feel like it's going to be really fun to do. Yeah, all of these conversations are kind of laying that the groundwork for all of like the emotional motivation that's going to be taking place in the dinner scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what do you guys think for today? What, what uh, do you guys think we got? What we wanted to get done done? I think this has been a lot of fun. I think so too. I think we yeah. really established some storylines and mm-hmm. and got a even better idea of kind of how these characters are going to interact in the real world. But more importantly, we established that we all can be actors. Right. Yeah, look out Hollywood. <laughs> yes, so we should be hired any day now. Yep, uh, and we won't make this. Right. <laughs> yeah, so basically, uh, thanks for joining along. Thanks um, for being part of our edition, losers. <laughs> yeah, sorry that we're done now, but bye. <laughs> we're off to Hollywood. Yep. I want to interject something with you guys, and and we'll maybe we'll put a poll up for our audience. 
Someone the other day called our fans roomies, and I loved that. Yeah. Do we want to call our fans roomies? I think that's cute. I love that. Yeah. yeah. I think that's great. Oh, we should probably do a shout out. Yeah. Uh, so we wanted to say thank you, Morgan, for uh, responding it to our prompt. Uh, what did she say again? She sent in a very detailed grilled cheese recipe and, and one that I can get behind said, uh, I will eat literally anything with bread and cheese. <laughs> Which is solid. It was followed up by a meme of like Sonic on his deathbed. And it says, if I don't have a yummy treat every couple of hours, my condition worsens. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so a steady flow Gosh. of bread and cheese from Morgan. I, I expected that humor and I absolutely love it. It's so great. Fuck yeah. Thank oh you gosh. for uh, thank you for sending that in. We appreciate all of that. Yeah. Yes. We appreciate all three of those things. No kidding. So Austin, you have another roomie you want to shout out? Yeah. This particular roomie told me that they listen to the podcast sometimes and uh, they actually specifically requested uh, when their shout out will come about. And so this is a shout out to you, uh, Bailey, for being a part of our journey. And your photo challenge will be uh, something that screams summer. We figured that with your artistic talents, that will be an easy one for you. So there you go. You have your assignment. Tag the Room Tone Podcast on Instagram or Facebook. And thank you for listening to the show. We appreciate it. Well, you guys, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. I don't think I've ever uh acted <laughs> or actually attempted to act before so that was a very interesting perspective shift from what i'm accustomed to hmm i don't know if i believe that though because i would say that you're one of the most vibrant dungeons and dragons role player that i that i've had the pleasure to play with i suppose i always forget like i'm technically acting during during that i just get lost in the sauce yeah you really do you get really into it and I you're get lost in the you're sauce. a lot of fun to have at the table <laughs> It's a fun, fun to be there. But yeah, no, I think we did had a very successful day today. It was, it was a good day. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank y'all for for joining us, listening to us uh, try it out. And until next time, pause for room tone.